Okay, so now that we have gone through and done our residual checks, we actually should go through and see um, from like our results and our output, what exactly, how do we interpret the, the output that we're going to get from our software. So remember, like what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the line of best fit for our data and then to see is that slope significant? Is there really a relationship between our x and our y variables? Okay, so the output that is, you could learn how to do this by hand, or we can just use the software that we're going to um, be using, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, you can go in and dive into some books or get online and find exactly the equations for what's going on, uh, but for this class, we're just going to be using the software. And it's going to give you an intercept and a slope. So for this one, let's say the intercept is equal to like negative one and the slope is equal to three. So then our equation is going to be like y hat is equal to negative one plus three x. Right, so it's going to give us that output. And it's also going to give us a few other things. It's going to give us our test statistic, which is going to be a f score. And then it's going to also give us from this F score, it's going to give us a P value. And then it's also going to give us one more thing, this R squared value. So let's talk about it a little bit. So the F score is just like our T score or our Z score from previously. This is like how we kind of normalize or standardize our data. And then the P value lets us know how weird is this result if the null hypothesis is true. Remember, the null hypothesis in this one is that there is no slope or that it's a flat line, meaning that there's no relationship between the data. So that's what our p-value lets us know. And we still just do a regular comparison comparing the p to our alpha. So if our p-value is less than alpha, we're able to reject the null hypothesis and claim that there is, in fact, a relationship between our x and our y values. Okay, so then we can interpret what does this result mean. And we need to be able to interpret the slope. All right, so if you kind of dig back into geometry or maybe some of your other math classes, we've interpreted slopes before. So let's specifically do it here. So we could say that for every one unit increase, increase in x, there is a, and this is going to be the slope, uh, change. in y. Okay, so for every one unit increase in x in this scenario, we would have a three unit increase in our y variable. I put slope here because and instead of just increase here, it could be decrease if we had a negative slope. Uh, but yeah, for every one unit increase in x, there is a slope change in y. So that's how we interpret these results. Now this isn't enough. If our results are significant, that's great, but we want to know is our model any good? Like, does it do a decent job? Now, one way that we're able to assess this, it's not perfect, but we can use what's called R squared. And R squared specifically tells us this is the percent, percent of variability in the data, or yeah, in the data that is explained explained by the model or this basically says yeah like what percent of the variability in the data is explained by the model if the data points are really close to the line it means that most of the variability in the data is explained away by the model that's a good thing if we have a another data set that looked like this with the data points being much more further spread out there's still yeah a general relationship but the very but there's a lot more noise in the system there's a lot more variability and so the r squared would be less so your r squared uh where am i going to put this i'll put it here so r squared is going to be between zero and one and the closer to one that we get the better 
And really to be like a good model, you want it to at least kind of crack through, um, you know, like 0.8. In, in fields like engineering, you really need to be, your R squared needs to be closer to like 0.9 or 0.95. Uh, it needs to be a lot, a lot more. In some of the social sciences, it can be down a little further. And as I like to say, steel is very predictable and people are not. Uh, so there's just more noise in the system when you're dealing with, uh, with social sciences. Uh, but these are kind of the pieces of the puzzle that the regression output will give you. And in the software videos, I'll show you exactly how we can perform our regression analysis on the data uh, that we are given.